What's going on guys? Steve Blake here. Uh, today I'm sitting with Sam. Uh, he'll introduce himself in a second, but we're going over editing sneaker photos in Lightroom. Lightroom is an Adobe application. You can download a free trial for 30 days. It's fairly inexpensive. And while I don't advocate for it, you can always get like a pirated cracked version. But honestly, if, if you purchase a DSLR, um, which the photos we're editing today are, are shot on a DSLR, most of them come with an Adobe uh, CD anyway, and you can most likely find one on eBay for three to four dollars. So it's definitely worth your time um, if you're going to be taking your photo editing process seriously. Uh, this is all I'm going to say for this one. I'll hand it over to Sam. I'm just going to walk you through uh, how he edits a photo after importing it. What's good, guys? It's Sam here, also known as Squiver with my photography. So I'm just gonna run through how I edit my typical sneaker picture. Um, this is after I've taken the pictures and I always shoot in raw, as you guys showed it. Uh, it's like a digital negative. You get a ton more data that way. You have a lot more to edit with. So on one side, uh, take the photos and upload them here. Then I go through and I select which ones I like. I'll go through and I've selected this one to edit uh, just cause I like the tones. I like the composition off the bat. So the first thing I do, no matter what, is I scroll down to the lens corrections and I always enable the profile corrections. This will fix any vignetting and any aberrations or any distortion that the lens will create. And even though you might not notice it with your eye, it's usually there a little bit if you're shooting anything like 50 or wider. Yeah. And then also just remove chromatic aberration just to fix anything minor. Usually you don't see it, but sometimes it'll catch something that even your eye won't see. So this is the first thing Sam taught me too. It's it's super important because the, the profile lens corrections, a lot of people don't even realize. And this is something, even if you have a trial version of Lightroom after the 30 days, it'll still be an option for you. It does it automatically and, and it basically fixes it in, in plain terms. It, it corrects things that your, your eye is just missing. It makes everything look a lot cleaner. And also when you click enable profile corrections, it should automatically detect what lens you're shooting with. If it does not, you can go to profile and manually select your lens. I know um, some Zeiss lenses it doesn't pick up and maybe a few other third party lenses, but usually it'll know right away. So after this, then I go through and I automatically uh, look at the picture and I adjust the exposure. So this one, it's pretty good. It's pretty properly exposed. Um, Sometimes I'll just like toggle it just to see how it looks a little bit brighter or darker. But this one, I'm pretty happy with it. And then also, because you're shooting raw, you can change the temperature and uh, use that pretty accurately. So with this, I you can always grab the, uh, the uh, eyedropper and touch any tone that should be white, gray, or any neutral color. So this, I can just click on something that's white and it'll automatically adjust a little bit. And then you can always fine tune with your eye. I think that's a little warm, so I'm just gonna cool it down a tiny bit. So then from there, I um, I use Visco as a base for editing all my pictures. So then I usually go through and I just kinda look through this little area up here, um, right above, and see which Visco filter I think would look nice for the photo. And Visco presets you can you can download um, just like with the application that I actually did a video on earlier for editing photos on the iPhone. These are presets that you can import into Lightroom. Um, if you are unsure how to do that, it's it's worth just literally googling how to import Visco presets because um, that'll explain it in in a lot more detail than we have time for today. Yep. So then I'll go through and just kind of see what I like. I'll maybe click one and see how it looks and then click another. Um, if you click uh, more than one, it'll overwrite, uh, it'll override the last one. So you don't have to worry about them combining. So I'll just go through and like see which ones I like. Um, I'll see with this. I think I like usually superior 800 for these type of fall tones, maybe even 800 plus. No, I'll just go with 800. So then after this, I kind of like how these tones are looking. Usually I just use Visco for, for the tones because I kind of go through and I alter everything else. So once I select this, then the thing I do automatically, and this is just a personal preference, is I go down here and I remove all of the grain. I know a lot of photographers like the grain. It kind of gives it more film feel. Also, uh, it kind of makes the picture a little more like rough and raw. 
but I usually get rid of it just to give it like a nice clean clear shot so then after that if I want it I'll um, give it a little uh, vignetting uh, right here not lens vignetting but just like a little bit of vignetting so usually maybe I'll do like somewhere from negative 5 to maybe negative 10 I'll usually just play around with it and see what I like I think I'll do negative 5 for this and it helps really make the the focal point of whatever you're shooting stand out a little bit more by by darkening the edges, right? Yeah, and and I don't always use vignetting. Uh, if I'm doing like a landscape shot, I wouldn't use it. But for something like this, where the focus is right in the middle, that pair of shoes, I'll pretty much always throw it on. So with this, I think I'll do negative five. I'll kind of play around with the midpoint, um, maybe make it like a little bit wider, and then maybe adjust the feather a tiny bit. Just I, I just kind of tweak it until I see what my eye likes. And what does feathering do? So feathering is, uh, it's kind of like, so basically if you set the feather to zero, there'll be a pretty distinct line of uh, where okay. the getting is. And then the more you feather, the more it kind of like, uh, blends, like, it like blends it in and like blurs it together. I think I'll set this to like about 75. So then from there I'll go and I'll adjust all of my tones. So usually I'll leave contrast alone until the end. Usually, um, I'll probably leave at zero. Sometimes I even decrease the contrast if I need to. But uh, the first thing I jump to is the highlights and the whites. So usually I'll just kind of play around with it. With these, they're already pretty strong, so I might even lower them a little bit. And the uh, background is already pretty pretty good. Usually the, uh, the sky is a little blown out, but Tyler and I shot this on overcast day, so the sky was pretty perfect. And then with the white, I'm gonna increase this just to make the whole photo kind of pop a little bit, just kind of to give it like a bright, uh, like kind of like very like gleaming photo, and then I was just like tweak it just to see what I like. You can always go back after, and that's pretty good. So then with my shadows, this already has pretty good tones going across with the shadows, but but sometimes I'll decrease the blacks to like darken the, the picture overall and then I'll increase the shadows so that way you get some of the details but the dark tones get a little darker to kind of give it a little more like natural contrast so then from here this is where I'll usually throw in some clarity I I'm pretty um, back and forth with clarity sometimes I want to throw a lot on sometimes I like leave it at zero um, with something like this where it already does have a, a bit of natural clarity I'll maybe throw on like five or ten. Right. Like Can you show them what like an extreme would look? Yeah. So like some people use way too much clarity on their photos, and I don't recommend that. Yeah, it can look pretty, pretty nasty. It start. It starts looking unnatural the more clarity yeah. you put on. It really makes and defines all those individual lines and, and outline of the sneaker. And and when you do a clarity filter too much, it, it just starts making it look like it's. Uh, it's something that was might might have been created with like a, a computer program or something like that. Yeah, so with something like this, I'll usually just keep it like below ten. Um, I'll probably like I'll just do five. Like also, if you if you lower the uh, the clarity, it'll make the picture look like super soft and kind of blend together, which um, I don't really ever use. I know some people use that for uh, portraits of people to kind of make their facial features look really soft. But for this, I'll just stick it with five, and I think that looks pretty good. Like. There's like a bit of clarity and the, like the shoes look kind of like raw and like nice and like rich tones, but not too bad. So then after this, usually what I do is I always increase the vibrance and decrease the saturation a little bit. So usually I do like somewhere from 20 to 30. So by doing this, usually it's just like making the photo very vibrant and the colors really pop, but it's not oversaturating. And I think everyone knows what an oversaturated photo looks like. It just looks like way too like the colors are just like too kind of in your face like i guess if you <laughs> if you up the saturation it just looks gross yeah, like it just looks like 13 14 year old girl that just discovered <laughs> editing yeah so so i usually <laughs> stay away from that but if you increase the vibrance i usually do sometimes if it's a photo where i'm where it's kind of dull and i'm really trying to make one color pop i'll even sometimes go up to like 40 or 50 it really depends and then usually i'll drop the saturation down to negative five oops my bad guys or even negative 10 just to kind of give it like a little kind of like hazed out feel but like the colors are still really there and they really draw your eye because i think i'll do like negative eight so i think that looks pretty good so then after this something i do is i'll add a little bit of natural fade i think with a visco presets when you buy them 
Um, sometimes, well, actually, this one doesn't have fade. I think one of the other packs has a fade preset, but what I do is I just uh, naturally do fade. So I create a bunch of points along the tone curve, um, and then I flip up the bottom tail to kind of kill the shadows. So if you see, if I do this like really extreme, just to show you guys, um, you can see like all these tones in here. They're not dark blacks. So it's kind of like flatten out whereas before they looked like this so usually I just flip it up a little bit just to my liking I don't have like a certain amount that I do or anything but uh usually and, and the higher you go that's what I think people are that are fans of the kith filter they oh, kind of yeah. they suck some of the contrast out and then you do the shadowing mm -hmm. um, which is great for product shots but but the more you do it the more it fades out the natural color of the product and I think one of the things I really like working with Sam at least is whenever there's there's after editing the the tones and the richness of the actual materials are going to be close to what you get in real life um, which is super important if you're doing product shots and you're watching this um, it's probably less important if you just want to have dope photos on your Instagram <laughs> but if, if you're watching this as someone that you know might be working for a boutique or, or any sort of thing outside of sneakers and, and wants to really come across with a a true color you kind of want to stay away from washing things out like that yeah so after doing that I think I like how it looks um, the tones are really nice all across the board so then I'll drop it down and as Tyler was saying you got to make sure that the colors are pretty exact so for this um, like this is uh, a shoe that was uh, concepts collab with, with New Balance and since concepts might be be uh, getting the photos I might be sending them to them just to uh, look at I want to make sure that the colors are pretty exact because if I send them a photo with like the colors <laughs> pretty off, they're they're not gonna like it as much. So um, usually Visco, all the filters they'll kind of play around with the hues a little bit just to kind of match whatever film you, uh, you're emulating. So this, since it's kind of the magenta red tones, usually I'll bring them back to zero, um, which is, which means unchanged, uh, just to uh just to match the colors a little bit. That's even a little too red. And also usually when I do this, I always keep one of the shoes with me. So I can visually match it with the photo. So actually, I'm gonna increase this a little bit, and then I'm, I'm holding the shoe with me right now. And I think that looks a little bit more exact. Play with the magenta a little bit. Really, and I think that's pretty good. So now I'm looking at it, and I think it looks pretty accurate to the color of the shoe. It still pops. Um, looks really nice and then um, for certain sneakers so like let's say I'm taking a picture of um, of a shoe that's like mostly black but has like an orange uh, like an orange component like an orange midsole or something like that um, then that's when you can kind of play around with like the saturation of one color and really bring it out so with, with something like this it wouldn't really work because like it's just it's gonna look kind of unnatural but if it's like one minor component you, you could really pull it out and it'll just really pop so um so there's that, and then luminance is like you. It's kind of hard to explain, but like I can show you. It's kind of like the overall, like how much like light, or I guess like how much white or black is in yeah, that color. Yeah, adding more white actually there makes it a little bit more true to color too. Yeah, so if, if we go back, thing. I guess so the luminance is that. So I that's guess we this is that. natural. I guess I think even that's pretty accurate to what it looks yeah. like. I'm not sure if any of you guys have seen these in person, but that's pretty close they almost even look a little bit more pink um let's see i think that's pretty good yeah so yeah that kind of brings out too and then if there's like one color that's like dominating you can kind of uh, loosen that up over here so then this is um split toning and split toning is like uh, you can add an artificial color to either the shadows or the highlights or both on your photo Usually when doing product shots, I stay away from this just because you're trying to uh, portray accurate colors. But for my own personal photography, um, just kind of like my street photography, lifestyle stuff, I have um, some settings that I like. Uh, usually pretty minor. Usually the saturation is only like 5 or 10. But that just kind of like makes it like makes the photo my own, kind of like gives it a color scheme that my fans can identify my photos with. So with this I'll kind of leave it alone. But usually I would just, um, I would, like you can use this and kind of like, see what you like if you can see here it's it's uh it's playing with the uh the highlights and you kind of keep it down so you can do that but with this i'm just gonna leave it alone so then after this um there is the sharpening usually with my photos although this one's already pretty sharp i usually sharpen it like somewhere from 25 to 40 
Um, you've got to keep in mind that when you upload something to Instagram or like a lot of places online, it'll kind of kill the quality. So sometimes if I'm if I know this is going straight to Instagram, I'll up the sharpening to maybe 40, just so I know it's gonna desharpen a little bit after that. Um, with this, um, I'll just leave it because it's already pretty sharp. And then the noise reduction, um, pretty much I'll use noise reduction if I'm shooting at an ISO over probably 800. It really depends on the photo. If there are a lot of really dark tones and you can see like a lot of noise, then I'll use this. Um, for you guys that don't know, the ISO is the overall like, uh, brightness of the photo, I guess. And um, the higher ISO you go, the more noise you get in the uh, dark and light tones of your photo, mostly the dark tones. So um, with this, I was shooting an ISO of 200, uh, which is pretty low. So as you can see, there really isn't that much noise, maybe like a tiny bit. That's kind of like natural. But if you like look in the dark tones, there's really nothing. So usually with this, I'll just leave it. Um, you'll, you'll pretty much notice it. And you want to add it when it's like noticeable to the eye. Uh, most people aren't really going to be zooming in and inspecting your photos. But um, beware of upping the noise reduction too much because then it'll make the photo look kind of unnatural. Um, and then I'll go through, just kind of make sure that the vignetting still looks good after I've made my other edits. And then another final touch is like sometimes I'll edit like a little tint to the shadows. Maybe I'll add like a minus 10 to make it look a little bit more green or maybe to make it look a little more magenta with this I'll maybe do like negative like three just to give it a little green to kind of go with like the green in the background and that just like affects the shadows it's pretty minor and then after that um, that's pretty much it so then what I'll do throughout the entire time that I'm editing is I'll use the uh, the slash key the one above the the enter button the one below the uh, the backspace if you uh, click that if you press that um, it'll toggle between the before and after of your photo Wow. So yeah, it's a pretty. I forgot what it looked like. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty <laughs> drastic edit. But when you're looking at it without the before, you don't even uh, like think that it would be that that drastic. So I always go back and forth just to make sure that I'm not really distorting one thing too much. Um, the colors are still pretty true. The colors in the after actually look almost closer to the actual shoe. And like after this, I might like after going back and forth, I might like decrease highlights or just kind of like make small tweaks like that right. also what I'll do right here is I'll kind of inspect the shoe and make sure that there aren't any blemishes so for example there's a little dot right there I'll take the spot correct and I'll just click that and I'll get rid of it um, some people just don't even do that because it's such like a minor detail but it's little details that count and it'll just make your overall body of work you're trying to more. slay Instagram yeah <laughs> no. But, but most importantly is is these photos obviously display best when they're uploaded in their their most complete form and, and Instagram and Facebook definitely take away from it um, but if you do spend the extra time editing it in something like Lightroom I think you'll get a, a, a better appreciation when they do get the the quality cut as opposed to doing nothing at all so um, this video is probably really long I, I, I don't know how long it is right now but I appreciate if, if you guys have sat through to the end I uh, hope you learned something I'm actually going to be referencing this video all the time because Sam's already taught me this and I already remembered a bunch of things I forgot from the first time so um, I'll definitely link Sam's information down in the description um, he has a really good Instagram feed he, he's into sneakers as well as other things and uh, he's definitely pretty responsive on Twitter as well so if you want to uh, thank him down in the comments or you have questions for him I'm sure I'll check it out but do you have any last words um not really. I, actually, one thing. Uh, people are asking me all the time how to get better at photography, and I always tell them one thing. You just got to take pictures. You're not going to get better really by like studying pictures too much. You like you learn what you like, but really the biggest thing is just going out and shooting. Just like Whether it's like grabbing your camera, going to your backyard, and just trying to shoot whatever you see, or just like driving to a city and doing that, you just really got to keep shooting, and by doing that, you will improve, definitely. Nice. Word. Well, thanks so much, man. And uh, we'll, if you guys can, if you stay to the end, hit a thumbs up button. I don't know how, how many people made it to the end, but I appreciate you anyway. And uh, yeah, T-Blake signing out. Catch you guys soon with new content. Peace. See you guys.